We're here at Tennessee Tech University for the 2017 Human Powered Vehicle Challenge at ASME's eFest East. These three day, two night global festivals bring together engineering, robotics, live music, industry leaders, workshops and student challenges for one unforgettable experience where you can truly party like an engineer. Now in this challenge, 33 teams from the US and beyond will pit their vehicles against each other through a series of events. All teams involved had to design and build efficient, highly engineered vehicles for everyday use, from commuting to work to carrying goods to market. So here's what we've got in store. We're making use of the university's entire campus by setting out a series of tests, including a speed event and an endurance challenge that goes all the way around the campus with obstacles. So these teams have to be ready for a variety of scenarios. But before any teams can take part in the races, they must present their vehicle to the judges and pass a safety check. Then the real fun begins. So these vehicles are designed by engineering students. They're also built by engineering students. So we have to make sure that what they build is actually safe to run in the competition. So they have to go through a series of challenges. First, they have to have a visual inspection done by one of our safety judges. They have to be able to ride in a straight line. That sounds easy, it's not always easy. And then they have to be able to get up to a certain speed, 25 kilometers per hour, and stop within a prescribed distance. That's your brake test. And they have to be able to turn within the minimum turning radius. We really try to put these vehicles through the paces because we want to make sure that the riders are safe before we let them out in any of the race events. Our vehicle's name is Rose Pedal and we're from Rose Holman Institute of Technology. This team is relatively new and we don't have any experience building tricycles. The judges were impressed that we actually followed the rules for our PS testing and I think they were very impressed with our tilting mechanism that we can actually use to stabilize ourselves. It's a lot of fun to ride. Alright, uh, so we're the Black Pearl. Uh, so just picture you take the rowing machine out of a gym, take the giant fan off the end, put wheels on it, and go down the road. <laughs> Which is an interesting design, so. We are the Blackjack. Uh, we ran into some issues during the fall of almost crashing into people, so when you hit 20 miles per hour, uh, it'll turn on an air raid siren that's on the side of it and warn people that you're coming up upon them. So tonight we have some minor changes. We, we're going to try and install a windshield on our hatch because we don't actually have one yet, we just have a hole and we're gonna see if we can get more people riding so we have more practice. Uh, we feel really confident and we are excited for the rest of the weekend to get out on the track and go. With the presentations and safety checks now out of the way, it's time for the speed round. For this event, we have closed off a long enough stretch of road to allow all teams enough room to get up to high speeds. Each team will get to compete with both male and female riders, with the winner being whoever manages to cross the finish line in the fastest time. Last year um, it was hard to pick up speed and so we learned a lot from that and shifting gearing so and we have strong riders this year so I'm feeling pretty good about it. I'm, I'm actually looking forward to it but I think it'll be pretty challenging. We are very near to our theoretical maximum speed, 55 kilometers per hour. We expect a very good position hopefully. Just broke. That's awesome. <laughs> South Dakota State University has just won the speed event for both the women's and the men's categories. But it's not over yet. We have to see how they perform in the endurance race next. If you build a vehicle that's purely for speed and you can't turn, you will not be successful on this course. 
Um, it scares us a little bit, the hill climbs, um, both, two of them on the course. The rumble strip is because you have to sit there and take it. We are going to be feeling those bumps, but our turns are going to be amazing. The most nerve-wracking part will just be the length of it, yeah. Moving around other vehicles might be more of an issue because they're going to be moving slower than us, hopefully. <laughs> The course for the endurance race runs all around the university campus, with obstacles scattered throughout. Teams have two and a half hours to get as many laps in as possible. Despite a thunderstorm on the forecast, the event is still going ahead. The teams are just going to have to get a little wet. Make you go, make you go. And they're off. Vehicles are lined up in order of how they performed in the speed challenge, with South Dakota taking the first position. I'd say the biggest obstacle is some of those speed bump obstacles. We're mildly worried about the speed bump just because we didn't design to an increased height this year. We'll probably uh, go and scrape the bottom of our vehicle a little bit. I don't think that's going to be a big deal. We'll just put something on the bottom to resist the abrasion. With the speed bump out of the way, it's a straight stretch up to the next obstacle. A stop sign, which may seem harmless, but it does present its own challenge. The most difficult part would be the stop and start. Low speed stability is our biggest weakness. It's kind of hard to come to a complete stop and start again on a recumbent bicycle. Coming up now is the hill climb. This is the obstacle that most teams are concerned about. Things that I'm worried about is the hill that we're going to go through. The uphill, uh, because again of our weight, this is maybe the most concerned one. Run for 30 minutes and having to go up a steep hill with our trike and it is heavier than a two wheel, I'd say that's probably gonna be the worst part of that. We've built it out of steel and our wells are pretty strong. Uh, turn radius is pretty good and brakes. We've been hitting the gym pretty hard to like have our legs get ready for those hills. Yeah, people don't realize these riders are tired. These are vehicles that are built by engineering students. They're not built by professionals. So sometimes your drivetrain may not be quite as good as you think it is, and it really presses the human power portion of this to get those vehicles up that hill. I think our limitation is not going to be the bike. It might be us. We haven't really been hitting the gym after, during this whole competition. Like the, getting the vehicle going is the hardest part of it. So if we have to stop remotely close to the beginning of the hill, we're gonna have a bit of an issue with that one. We're, we'd have to get out. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure that there's no way you can recover. What we wanna do is get these engineering students out of the mindset of going fast, 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 into the mindset of building something actually useful for the real world applications that, that we try to emulate with this course. The most concerning obstacle I would probably say is the rumble strip. We don't have suspension on our vehicle, so we're gonna be feeling every single bump. What's the purpose behind the rumble strip challenge? So the rumble strip challenge really tests the ability of these vehicles to be utilized on multiple surfaces. If you're in a city and you're going across pavement, you're not always going to be on nice smooth pavement. If you don't put in a suspension system or if you have poorly welded parts, that rumble strip is going to be pretty terrible for you. Our bike is really sturdy. I'm not worried about it falling apart or anything. I think we'll do pretty good. Once teams have made it over the rumble strip, they then head straight into the next obstacle, the slalom. Obstacles that require a lot of maneuvering, those tend to be our most challenging. We only give just enough steering clearance to do the obstacles that we're anticipating. It's just you know, annoying to have to cut away a little bit more and lose that much more on the aerodynamics. I think the biggest challenge is turning uh, our vehicle because it's only from a speed. I don't think it can go well through it, but yeah. The slalom really is to check the stability of the vehicle when you're making turns. It really tests the stability of these vehicles at speed. So up next is the hairpin. Yeah, so the hairpin turn is really designed to make sure that these teams have actually looked at the rules and can turn within the radius that they're supposed to have designed these vehicles for. This is gonna really stress some of those teams that may have a shakier steering system 
but it's going to be really advantageous for the ones that are nimble and agile on the course. At this stage, teams have made it through the bulk of the course and are headed into that final stretch with only a few more obstacles left between them and the finish line. Which of these obstacles should riders be really looking out for? I would say the quick turn. You're going at your full speed and at the last minute a judge tells you which way to turn. So you have a choice. You turn the way the judge says or you turn the way you'd already decided and get penalized. Teams have two and a half hours to get as many laps in as possible. The most nerve wracking part will just be the length of it, yeah. Over a period of two and a half hours, all teams have had to ride around the endurance course, climb hills and overcome obstacles as many times as possible to see who can finish with the most laps. When needed, teams are allowed pit stops as well as the option to periodically swap drivers. And now, it's the final stretch to the finish. After two and a half hours, the endurance race is over and South Dakota got first place. Right, but they can't celebrate yet. There's more to winning this competition than just winning the endurance race. They have to also factor in the design scores and the innovation scores, and those weigh heavily for the judges. During this event, teams also had one more obstacle, the security lock test. If the judges could not break the lock within the set time, then the teams can win bonus laps. All right, first place overall for the 2017 Human Power Vehicle Challenge East goes to Number 32, Rose Holman Institute of Technology. So Rose Holman has been one of our top competitors for years on both the East and West events. And they have put together a really nice design with a lot of innovation this year. I'm feeling great. We were thinking it would be really close. We were right. I think the hardest part was just passing other people in them to make sure we didn't actually like knock any cones over or anything like that. So that's it for eFest 2017. For more information, visit eFest.asme.org. Party like an engineer. <laughs> oh, high five. <laughs> <laughs>